Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Those of you that follow my channel know that a few months ago, I did a couple videos on a Mac application called Avalanche. Avalanche allows you to take the catalog and edits from one application and convert it to another application. I did one video where I converted the catalog and the image edits from Luminar 4 to Luminar AI. I did another video where I converted the catalog and the edits of Lightroom to Luminar AI. Recently, they added Capture One to the mix. Now you could convert Aperture, Luminar 4, Luminar AI, and or Lightroom, all the catalogs, all the edits, to Capture One. And that's what we're going to be trying to do today. Now, I have no affiliation at all with the company that makes Avalanche. They're not paying me to do this video. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to their website. If you purchase the software, I will not make a commission. Now, the way we're gonna do this is I have um, a Lightroom test catalog. And the reason why I created a test catalog, two reasons. First of all, my Lightroom catalog is like 60, 70,000 images, so that would take a long time to convert. Second, I took a sampling of images from different cameras and different formats, meaning this is a JPEG from an iPhone. Then I have a few images that were shot with a Nikon D500, of course, which of course is a crop sensor camera. Then I have a couple or three HDR images shot with a Nikon D800E. Then I have an image that was shot, I believe, with a Nikon D850, then a Sony a7R 4 then I have a Fuji X-T4, but this one has a real significant crop. So I wanted to see how it handles a crop. Then I have an X-T4 image that doesn't have a crop. Then I have a set of two images here. The color one, um, both of them, were shot with a Sony a7R 4 But then I took this image and I sent it over to Silver FX Pro 2, and I got this black and white image. So we're gonna see how it handles that. Over here I have another Sony a7R 4 This is a Sony a7R 4 but um, I took the image into Photoshop and I added the stars in the sky and the reflection of the stars in the water. So I want to see how it handles that. Another Sony a7R 4 This is a Nikon Z6 II, and I want to see if it handles uh, local adjustments. So if I give you a before, you can see there's a seagull up in the sky here. I used a uh, spot removal tool to remove the seagull. Just see how it handles that. Here's a Sony, or I'm sorry, Nikon Z7 II, and this uh, Nikon Z7 II as well. So we're going to convert these 20 images and see how it handles the conversion. Now, those of you that watched those other two videos know that it was around, I'd say, 70, 75% of them converted okay, and some of them were horrible, and, you know, we'll see if this is around the same. So... What we're going to do, we have to drag this catalog in here. I have this catalog on an external hard drive. And uh, there it is right here. And this is the catalog. So we'll just drag it in there. And it you know, gives you the info. It's got uh, 18 images, 20 versions. So I must have some virtual copies in there as well. So that's, you know, we're testing whether or not it handles a virtual copy uh, as well. So we'll do that. So we're going to convert this catalog. Click there. And what do you want to convert it to? Capture One, Luminar 4, Luminar AI. I'm going to do Capture One. Uh, do we want to export the Sidecar XMP? No, we'll embed the content. Ignore videos. There are no videos. Um, copy reference master files. Yes, I want to do that because I want to have, I want Lightroom to have its own copy of images and Capture One to have its own copy of images. So it's not sharing images. Uh, separate image and video hierarchies. Not applicable. No video. Uh, reproduce source hierarchy, sure. By year month, sure. Um, which version of Capture One do I want to use? I have both version 20 and version 21 on this computer. I'm going to use the latest version, version 21. Use the IPT status title of the variant. Um, now it's defaulted off, so I'll leave that off. Variant is a virtual copy. Uh, import of available previews. It's defaulted to never, so I'll leave that as never. Enable GPS information and masters. It's defaulted to never. There's only GPS information, as far as I know, is only in that iPhone image. So I'm just going to leave that as never. So we'll go to next now. And where do we want to save this to? I'm going to click browse. We'll just save it to the desktop so we could easily find it. 
and we're going to see how long it takes to convert 20 images, 18 images to variants or virtual copies. You can see it went pretty quick. It's at 82, slowing down a little bit. And it's at 91, I'm kind of just sitting there. Okay, it's done. Um, it's got an exclamation point next to 18 masters. Not sure what that means. Let's see, elapsed time. Um, the rejected and picked flags were converted. All right, that's good. Well, I'm not really sure. We'll open it up and see. Let's open catalog and see what happened here. So it's going to open up Capture One with this catalog, and we'll look at these images, okay? No image selected. There's no images over here. I'll go over to Folder. Probably have to just click on the folder. All images there. There they are. Okay. All right. The first one is horrible. All right. Right out of the bat. We're horrible. Let's open up Lightroom again, and let's see if we can match up these images. Okay. Um... This is a relatively old image, and to tell you the truth, I don't remember what I used to create this HDR image, if I used Photoshop or if I used another application. But as you could see, it didn't do a very good job on that one. So 0 for 1 so far. All right, here's another one. Now, this was the same night from the same rooftop of a building, and this one, oops, this one came out pretty good. Uh, we'll go back to Lightroom. It's going to be hard to do this. Uh, let's see, find it. There it is. I think I could do maybe, no, we don't want to do that. Why don't we try to bring this over here and then this one over this way. Maybe we could get a better look this. I don't know. It's going to be kind of hokey either way I do it, but we'll see. All right. So, okay. This is, that's pretty good. So it's one for two. All right, here is the inside of a church. You could see this one here is a lot more, you know, orangey and reddy and, you know, and this one's a little more kind of, you know, still very HDR. Those are difficult ones, I must say. All right, here's a Sony one, which is right here. Um, the edit, it's not as colorful as the Lightroom edit. All right. There is that one. There's that seagull. You can see that seagull right there. So it didn't did not remove the seagull. And here is the image over here. No, there is the image there. Sorry. Uh, you can see too. It's not as warm in through the wa uh, you know sky here. Um, so whether or not that's acceptable is up to you. Now here's two that it didn't find or didn't do. DSC zero one zero two for whatever reason. I don't know which one that is. Well, we'll do that by process of elimination. So it didn't find those two. Uh, here is uh, Nikon D850, which is right here. And it did pretty good on that one. That's just kind of a standard processing. It did all right. Here's the Sony A7R4, which was the color image. Um, this one, it's just not as colorful. And there's that black and white one. Did it do the black and white? Yeah. You can see the black and white one looks um, kind of a little more like, I don't know, kind of a little more yellowish or something. All right, we'll go to this one. Um, again, it's probably not as colorful as the Lightroom image. This is the one with the reflected water, uh, the stars, and that did a pretty good job. That looks pretty good there. All right, here is A7R4 of a colorful leaf pattern. Again, it's probably just not as colorful. And here is a crop sensor, Nikon D850. A uh, little more contrast maybe in the Lightroom one. The eye is a little more noticeable. So that's that. Here is this guy here. Again, more contrast over here. Here is uh, Amari the tiger. And again, probably more colorful over here. Here is a giraffe that is now in giraffe heaven, from what I understand. That look one, again, probably not quite as colorful. You can see, too, um, I shot this in inside the elephant, or inside the giraffe room. And if you look, you could see that there's white bricks behind it, but I purposely kind of blew it out over here 
And I don't know, did I use a brush? I don't recall how I did that. Yeah, I used a brush. So it didn't pick up, it didn't pick up the brush strokes uh, that I used to get rid of the lines of the uh, wall in the background. So it, it does an approximation, I guess, you know, of these things. Here's that extreme crop. It did take the crop with it. Again, it's probably not as colorful. This one's having the Lightroom there, the light one on rendered. It seems to be not as colorful. And here's another, that was a uh, X-T4. Here's another X-T4 Fujifilm. Yeah, it's, again, probably not quite as colorful. And here is the iPhone image. And there's the iPhone image there. Again, probably not as colorful. And the two that it seemed to have not been able to convert, I believe, were the ones from the um, Nikon Z7 II. These two. Both from Nikon Z7 II. Um, maybe that support isn't in Capture One yet. I'm not sure. Um, but that's probably it. They just don't have Z7 uh, support for the Nikon Z7 II yet. So that's why those two aren't here. So that's Avalanche. Again, in the description below this video, I have a link to their website. You can check it out. Um, it gets you, you know, it's an approximation. It's not doing it exact. I'd say that the results are, I can't remember. Uh, probably when I went from Lightroom to Luminar AI, the results are probably about the same. When we went from Luminar 4 to Luminar AI, I think the results were better because we were staying within, you know, that uh, Skylum software. Uh, so when you go from w one manufacturer to a different, it's or one software maker to a different software maker, then that's where you see the differences a little more, you know, obvious. So, you know, that's it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. We'll talk to you guys soon.